Thing. Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! Now, despite all the warnings, the EU referendum has made little impact on the UK economy so far, according to the Office for National Statistics. And the OECD revised up its growth forecast slightly, echoing the apparently positive news. Well, we're joined now again by Helia Ebrahimi. Um, Helia, this is yet more evidence, isn't it, that Project Fear has not yet materialised? Or indeed that economic forecasting is as changeable as the weather. And it seems that Brexit has really exaggerated that what uh, the OECD OECD have done today is row back on their dire warnings in June about growth this year. And they're an international, well-respected economic think tank, so what they say counts. And also today we had the ONS right here at home saying that so far the economic impact has been negligible, especially when it comes to consumer confidence. The one caveat to note is that when it comes to the OECD, they might have upgraded this year's growth, but for next year, they still downgraded it, echoing that idea that the hit from Brexit might not be felt now, but it might be felt later. And the final thing is that they said today, well, they called on the Chancellor, essentially, to increase public spending in the autumn statement. That's quite interesting, because previously, there have been great supporters of the government's austerity programme. Helia, thanks very much. And staying broadly with Brexit, earlier I spoke to the former Greek finance minister, Yanis Varoufakis, who, of course, has an insider's knowledge of how negotiations within the EU actually work. I asked him what advice he'd give the UK government in its Brexit negotiations. I try very hard to actually have negotiations. Uh, the problem with Europe, with the European Union, and the way in which they frame these discussions is they avoid to negotiate. My greatest pain was that there were, there were no negotiations. I was trying to negotiate and they always find an excuse to talk about something different and never to actually get down to the business of uh, striking an agreement. And that when they do begin, they begin properly with give and take, with compromises on both sides and with, within a framework that makes it possible uh, to produce a mutually advantageous agreement. When you talk about compromise and give and take, and how realistic is that, knowing the EU as you do? The European Union is in dire straits. The European Union is disintegrating in every sense of the word, uh, in terms of its banking, so-called union, in terms of its public debt, in terms of its economy, its politics, its humanity, even, if you think of it in terms of the refugee crisis. So it would be uh, detrimental to the interests of Europe not to negotiate with Britain. That does not mean that the European Union will negotiate with Britain. The European Union is not renowned for doing what is in the interest of Europe. Well, also, it sometimes felt, um, and still feels, with the EU's dealings with Greece, um, that they wanted to punish, the institution wanted to punish Greece. The same also you can see potentially happening with the UK, can't you? Do you worry about that? There's no doubt that there is a mindset which harks back to 19th century gunboat diplomacy in Brussels. The advantage that Britain has is that it is much larger and systema systemically important for the rest of the, of the European economies. This so is we something can play that, hardball? Oh, absolutely. And uh, I think that, that London should play hardball. I wish that you had voted to remain and play hardball with the rest of us against uh, Brussels and uh, the bureaucracy uh, in, in a different context. But now, given Brexit, you have to play hardball from without, but always with a view to striking a mutually advantageous agreement. We should not try to tear Europe apart. How bad do you think Brexit will be for Britain? There's no doubt that the European Union was badly constructed and it suffers uh, a, a long catalogue of demerits. But the disintegration of uh, the European Union is going to be costly for all of us. It's one thing not to have created it, it's quite another to dismantle it. But think about it, the th think of the great paradox that Britain is now facing. You voted to get out. But 
instead of dedicating all your resources as a nation to becoming extroverted and to be looking to the rest of the world to strike trade deals, to become again uh, a ruler of the waves, so to speak, you're going to have to spend the next 10 years in intense negotiations with Brussels, dedicating all your resources in, within Brussels and the European Union. This is a great paradox, isn't it? We, we, li we are living through deflationary times. This kind of pessimism that will grow out of the teething troubles of any agreement that is struck is going to add to those deflationary times. And deflation, you know, politically speaking and ethically speaking, breeds monsters. Think 1930s. You've talked about the disintegration of the EU. You've talked about that with a sort of certainty that it's already happening. Do you think then that Brexit makes Grexit much more likely? Grexit has always featured in my mind as the least likely outcome. The most likely outcome is um, a, a repetition of what happened in the Soviet Union. The Soviet Union, just like the European Union, was an unsustainable economic entity. The European Union can be fixed. It's not as much of a basket case as the Soviet Union was. But it is not being fixed because our great and good leaders take boat trips on the Danube, discussing everything except that which they must be discussing, which is the European Union crisis, economic crisis. And when you try to keep together an economic entity which is problematic through political willpower and authoritarianism, like in the case of Greece, what happens is you delay the disintegration, but when the disintegration begins, it is very quick and it is extremely painful. And so everyone you're... is going to suffer from that, even those who've exited, like Britain. Yanis Varoufakis, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. I've been